Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode and per usual, you know, I've got some stuff to show. Not a whole ton of stuff today, might be a short video, probably not, but let's go ahead and just get right into it. So I've got um, things found in stores consist of just these two five packs right here from Matchbox. So, pretty cool little five packs. We got Blue Highways 2 and Autobahn Express. We are going to open up both of these in the next segment. Take a look at these uh, 10 Matchbox cars. Pretty solid five packs. You know, I've been a big fan um, of what Matchbox has been doing as of late. And the five packs have been pretty solid as well. So, we're going to go ahead and check those out. Um, and then I got some mail. Uh, let's see here. These are from Surplus Goodies, Tarmac Works slash Shukos. I debated on whether or not to get these. And, you know, it's a beetle and a bus. And I said I was done buying buses because I have way too many. But, you know, I was interested kind of in seeing what this was all about. Now, I've got the Shuko, normal Shuko castings, I think, of both this bus and this beetle. Or, you know, the casting, anyway. I know I have got a Beetle. I don't know if I actually do have a bus. I don't think I do, actually. Yeah, I, d I don't. But whatever. It doesn't matter. We're going to take a look at these two and kind of see what the, their, you know, their drop really low and stuff like that. I think that's, I don't know, maybe the Tarmac contribution. The packaging is def definitely Tarmac works. It's global 64 packaging, but this is, of course, Collab 64. Kind of neat that they're doing that. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and open up those. We'll take a look at those in, in more detail. I also got in the mail my Mercedes-Benz 300 SL. I was lucky enough to snag one of these, but my buddy Todd was not. And this one's going to end up going to him. So I'm not going to open it. I... You know, I'm not going to take it out of the acrylic or anything. We'll take a peek at it um, in the case, which I know is not too exciting. Um, but, yeah, it looks pretty nice. I, I didn't think I was going to really like those wheels, but now getting it in hand, I think it actually looks pretty darn good. I um, was tempted to pick up one of these for myself. The chrome one, you know, is kind of a little bit cooler than that, like, olive green one or whatever it was just because it's a little bit more of an appropriate color for the vehicle, but I'm going to keep the olive green one. This one's going to go to Todd. He really wanted one of these and got did not get lucky on the RLC sale day and uh, missed out on it, as a lot of people did. Um, I was lucky enough to get one. I actually got one on my phone pretty easily, so um, I got lucky. All right, <clears throat> and then the next thing we're going to look at is I got a bunch of Mini GT. Um these are like i think like two different releases i've got this i already had one uh, but this is going to be just an extra i'm gonna hoard it i'm gonna hang on to this for a little while um maybe get rid of it down the line we'll see i ended up just getting an extra one of those um, so i've already opened up that dirty uh land rover on a different video you'll have to search and look for that uh, but i did get uh, a bunch of other mini gt here We've got, uh, well, actually, two versions of this. We've got, uh, so a BMW, a Porsche 911, an Audi uh, RS6 Avant, another Audi RS6 Avant, a Lamborghini in uh, magic bronze, Liberty Walk Lambo, and a Corvette in Accelerate Yellow. So I got these. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's going to be the thumbnail. And then... Um, We've got uh, another Lamborghini, Lamborghini Urs, in this white uh, Bianco Monoceros matte with roof box. So I'm guessing it's a matte finish. I don't know. And then I've got this Bentley Continental GT3 number 110 M Sport Team Bentley 2019 total 24 hours of spa. I'm actually excited to look at what this livery is going to look like outside of the box because I'm sure the box doesn't do it justice. Um, so we'll check that out as well. And th that is for, oh, one other thing. Um, so that's it that we're going to look at in this video. We're going to look at pretty much all this stuff. We're going to open up all the Mini GT. We're going to open up the Matchbox. We're going to open up those Shuko Tarmacs. And we'll take a look at that Mercedes real quick as well. But um, I also, my, I guess, childhood neighbor, neighbor of my parents' house, um, there was a... there. 
one of my buddies, you know, he lived like across the street from my parents. Anyway, he, I guess he had Hot Wheels as his kid and he took care of these things actually quite well. Um, this is just going to be a preview of a video, but she gave me his old hot, his, his mom gave me his old Hot Wheels collection. He has no interest in it. And uh, just said, you know, I can grab whatever I want out of it and uh, the rest, you know, uh, she's going to put in like a consignment shop or something like that. But he took really good care of his old cars. And uh, there are some pretty nice ones in here. Um, some old 80s real riders. Um, some other really cool stuff. And then sh there's like three cases here. I'm not going to show them all now because we're gonna, I'm going to do them in a separate video. There's a red line in there. Um, just some cool vintage, more vintage Hot Wheels. Um, and this big pile of cars too there's some cool stuff in here some of it's not great and some of it is quite good um, so stay tuned for that uh, that will be in a, a separate video I'll probably post this week um, just this upcoming week just showing going through this collection um, there is there is a couple cars in here I actually do need so I probably will uh, snag off of her and uh, the rest will kind of give her an idea of you know prices and whatnot and what maybe she should sell them for. So that's going to be that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, flip the camera around. We got a lot of Mini GT to look at. Again, the Matchbox, the Shuko, the Hot Wheels, Mercedes, and all that. So stay tuned. All right, so let's uh, just start by taking a quick little peek at this uh, Mercedes Benz. Um, so um, yeah, this is the one I peeled off. So, of course, it comes in a box, in a box, in a box. Here's the number. 140, or 14,733. 14,733 out of 20,000 pieces made. Of course, this thing sold out. Uh, here's a look around the box. Not too different from the first release of it. It's like a leather case kind of thing. Suitcase, dealy thingy. And here's the model. And the model does look... I would say quite nice in chrome. Um, it looks really good. And like I said, I kind of do actually really like these wheels. Apparently they were going to put Neo Classics on it. And uh, it's a good thing they didn't. That would have been way worse than these. A lot of people are complaining about these wheels, though. And complaining about the chrome and wanting it in silver. and You know, and I get that. I get it. But uh, there are some good, you know versions of this car out there in particular like Shuko makes one um, that are straight stock looking um, so I don't mind that they you know they hot wheels out these cars because that's what they do uh, so yeah I was lucky enough to get that one but it's not staying in my collection I gotta hook up my buddy Todd with that because he really wanted one I wasn't able to get one and I don't frankly care about it as much as he does so he's going to get it um this one let's look at these shuko tarmac works pieces here uh so they are packaged like the global 64 line where they're in like this clamshell oh, and they are taped on the edge but it is a real resealable or at least reclosable uh, package which is kind of cool i'm just cutting the uh tape there on the side so you got the uh, card art there. Limited production run. It says limited production run, but I don't think it says to what it is limited um, or what it's limited to. Here is just a little blister thing, the model itself, and the box, a box for it. Uh, I don't think there's anything inside the box. No, there is not. So that's how they're packaged. <clears throat> and here is the model. Jaeger livery. That's cool. And this thing is just scraping the ground, basically. So it is the Shuko casting, and it looks slightly modified to be lowered. Uh, it looks pretty good. We got uh, a wonky eye over here, though. That's a little unfortunate. Um might be fixable oh oh that's better it's 
kind of coming out of the hole there, but it looks uh, it looks better. Uh, the roof rack is on fairly straight. The, uh, the casting does have a slight lean to it that way, and um, I don't know. It's okay. I, did, I this is more of a curiosity to get this. I really like Shuko as a brand, and Tarmac Works. I like a, some of their stuff. I'm not a huge like Tarmac Works fan. I don't buy a ton of their stuff, but I do like um, a bit of it. You just can't buy everything. <clears throat> but I had to check out these Shuko collabs. So go ahead. And it's not the first time they did it. They also did that uh, other like Volkswagen van. I didn't pick that one up just because I already have that casting. I actually don't have this casting in Shuko, so... I guess it's kind of cool that I, that I picked it up. So there's Shuko Castings, and I think Tarmac Works basically does the uh, packaging and livery stuff. I'm not really sure how it exactly works with these uh, these collabs. Um, but uh, pretty cool, nonetheless. They just kind of go on this little joint venture together, I guess, and give us some interesting die cast. Here is the Beetle. Again, same packaging situation. I don't really need to look too in depth into that. Um, I'm just going to set it on the ground here, and then pull the beetle out. So again, it's a Shuko tooling VW Kafer, and I do have um, a couple of these. I think actually in my collection, that's standard ride height. Not really any point to get them out. They just sit higher. That's really the only thing to see that's different. Um, but again, this is just lowered scraping. And it's in golf livery. Is it licensed golf livery? Uh, where did I just stick the packaging? Uh, I'm going to say no. It's not. It isn't. It doesn't have the golf logo anywhere anyway. It's got the, uh, you know, the signature orange and blue. Uh, but no golf logo anywhere because it's kind of a faux golf. Kind of like a... It's a good luck though to this vehicle and you know the, the fans of golf livery will be a fan of this one too um, even though it's really technically not not a licensed uh, livery at least I don't see the golf logo anywhere on here on the car or the packaging let's put the packaging back together here to clean it up and get it out of the way but I don't know let me know what you guys think of these two models um, did you pick them up do you want to pick them up if you haven't? Um, what do you think about the collab between Shuko and Tarmac? I know um, Tarmac's done collabs now with quite a few. Right? I think they're doing one with, like, is that Kyosho, maybe? They did one with Mini GT. Um, just kind of interesting. I don't know how that all works, but it's kind of cool that they're playing nice together, these die-cast companies, and putting out some uh, kind of some neat models together. So... I think that's neat. All right. Let's look at Mini GT. Uh, we've got quite a few of these to look at. So we got this uh, Lamborghini Huracan in Magic Bronze. So I'm kind of excited to see what this color looks like. Magic Bronze. So this is like one of those, I think, color shifting kind of colors. And... Put that back in there. Oh, if you want to look at the packaging, there's really not much to look at on these. It's a nice, slick little box. And, of course, I love other packages because they got that little plastic car holder thingy in there. So, great for storage if you want to store these. Of course, I put them on a, in a display case. Um, yeah, it's a cool color. Kind of goes from, like, green to bronze. kind of how it looks kind of at different angles you can kind of see tones of green and that's about it I mean it's it's not as crazy as like the the green one that they put out like the magic green one or whatever that one was a little bit uh, more color shifty than this one but great casting great job they got the carbon fiber wing there it looks just really nice I love mini GT you guys know I'm a fan of mini GT I don't, the wheels falling off here on this one
That should be an easy fix, hopefully. If I can get it over. Uh, yeah. Once that uh, settles down on the rim there, it'll be fine. These are black rims, you can barely tell. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, put these, I'm just trying to stay organized while I do this here. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what should we look at next? Let's look at this, uh, well, let's stick with Lamborghini for just a moment. This is the uh, Urus in Bianco Monoceros mat with roof box. And I'm guessing that means it's just a matte white. And that's exactly what it is, is a matte white. I don't know why anybody would buy a Lamborghini in matte white. I almost didn't buy this one because I already do have just, you know, you get to be, like you get to start debating on whether or not you're going to be a completionist sometimes with castings and stuff like that. And I love this casting from uh, Mini GT. It's really nice, but this is probably the lamest color that it's been put out in. In my opinion, it's just a matte white. And I mean, they did a good job pulling off the matte look. Yeah, most of the time, like, there's really no gloss to this at all. Looks pretty good, but I already do have the casting in blue. I've got it in blue with this roof box thing, and then I also got it in the quintessential yellow. And that one looks really good. That's probably my favorite one. The blue one looks okay. I think that's the only other colors that's been out in is blue and yellow, and I do have those in the collection. So this is a third Urus release that has joined uh, the team here. And then uh, let's take a look at... Do we have any other Lambos? No. Uh, let's do this black BMW. I think I've got... Well, I've got three, maybe four different colors of this BMW already. This BMW M3. I don't know if this is a different casting. Or a variation of the tooling. Something about it looks different. Like the bottom bumper area. Like a body kit. It looks like it's almost on this one. Well, it's the BMW M3 AC Schnitzer S3 Sport. So I think it is different. I didn't. I don't have the other one. The other one's handy to compare what's exactly different about it. Maybe it's not different. The wheels are definitely different than any wheels that they've put on this uh, casting before, as far as I recall. But I think I've got it in white, blue, and like a Marlboro-ish looking livery, and a red, I think, are the, is the other color I've got this one in. So that makes this my fifth BMW of this variety in the collection. Again, we got a wheel that's a little off. There we go. Easy fix. It's gloss black. I don't really want to put a bunch of fingerprints on it because it's annoying to have to wipe those off. And love the way they did the front grille on these. It looks great. The headlights look great. Uh, just uh, looks really good with these wheels on it. And yeah, that's a solid little piece. I uh, like that. Uh, let's take a look at, I'm saving like my favorites, what I think are gonna be my favorites for last. We're gonna do the Chevrolet C8 Corvette Stingray in Accelerate Yellow Metallic. Accelerate Yellow Metallic. I've actually seen one of these uh, in the flesh in this color. And it's bright yellow. And they did a good job capturing it. Like, it's near fluorescent. I would never buy a Corvette in this color. But it is interesting. I mean, it is bright. Like, it is bright. No way to exaggerate that. It is just really, really bright. And it says metallic, but there really isn't, a, like, a metal flake to it at all. It's just extremely fluorescent-y. And it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. The wing on the back looks good. It's, you know, there's nothing, nothing to complain about with this one. 
so this casting I've already got, I believe, in two colors. I think I've got it in uh, red and a black. I think still the black one is my favorite. But this yellow color is kind of cool. It's somewhat unique. It's not like your basic yellow. It really is uh, bright. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just it's super, 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 super bright fluorescent yellow. And, of course, Mini GT did a great job on this casting. I do like it. And it's quite awesome. So, all right. So there's that. There's your C8. Uh, let's see. Next, let's take a look at the B. MW or Bentley, not BMW, Bentley Continental GT3, number 110 M Sport Team Bentley 2009, total 24 hours of spa. Let's check that out. Um, so these cars are cool in racing livery. Now they have, I've got, I think, one other version of it in like a racing livery. Um, there's also the other Bentley Continental that doesn't have the wing that they've released, slightly different casting. Um, Yeah, this is why I got this one. This, uh, I knew this was going to be... Oh, we got a wing issue. It's just not glued in at all. There's a little piece of dried glue on the end, it looks like, but it is not glued in at all. Well, it's not the worst thing to happen. A little, little tiny drop of glue will fix that. Yes, it is annoying, and I typically have gotten really good luck with Mini GT as far as uh, quality control goes. But there you go. They are not without error. Um, people have reported some quality issues with some, and, and it's going to happen with all diecast brands. I've been lucky enough to get, you know, pretty lucky. But it is really cool. It's got this metallic gold foil kind of look to it. Um, you guys will have to tell me, is that number supposed to be crooked on the top? Or is it supposed to be square? Because it looks like it's supposed to be square with how this is right here. And it is on crooked. So that may be an issue too. This might have been a, you know, a Friday right before shutdown for the weekend uh, model. Somebody was in a hurry, didn't glue this in, and uh, that may be wrong, it may be right, I am not sure. Other than those two issues, and like I said, this wing issue is a real easy fix. Just drop a little tiny little bit of glue in there, push her back down, and she'll be fine. But uh, it's still annoying. Still annoying to have to do that. I don't like that at all, um, and I don't know about this. I'm going to have to look at pictures of this model if anybody else posted it to see if this is supposed to be like squared up with the vehicle or if it's supposed to be at this weird angle right here. I just don't know, and the only way to know would be to look at another one. It's very possible it's supposed to be at that angle. I just, I don't know. Anyway, other than that, this livery looks fantastic. I love the gold foil and stuff like that. Bentley 100 years. It's just, it's a really beautiful looking uh, race car. So that's pretty awesome. Um, aside from the, the quality concerns. Uh, let's see here. And then next we're going to look at the two... Audi. So we got uh, the RS6 Avant in carbon, the carbon black edition Tango Red, and an RS6 Avant in Navara Blue Metallic. Let's look at the red flavor first. Nice. Looks good. So I wonder if this is, since this is like the black edition, is that why the Audi logo on the front is all blacked out? Like you, it's there, it's printed, but or not printed, but it's like part of the plastic piece that makes up that front grille bit but it's blacked out 
and it's black on the back too so I, I guess that's probably part of why it's the black edition maybe I don't know wheels look good overall it looks good it's not like a super exciting car but it is a, a wagon and that's kind of neat I think mini GT is just kind of you know playing the right notes uh, so let's take a look at this blue one it's R6 non-black edition and see if we get a silver Audi logo yeah we do this one's nice actually I think I like this one a little bit better in this blue color it's a it is a darker blue and it's got some metallic quality to it I like this a little bit better than the red just because you can see you know the tail light detail a little bit better and stuff like that and again the Audi logo is now uh, visible and it's uh, silver on the front rolls really nice and if you're not, if you're new to the channel, you're not familiar with Mini GT. Um, just to quick go over some things, it's they're all metal construction. They're meant to be real detailed, accurate replicas, but not to the point of where they're going to have like a ton of frag fragility to them. Um, they want you to be able to roll them across your desk, so they all roll uh, quite well usually, and. Uh, so that's why you're not going to see like the, the mirrors are rubberized and stuff like that you're not going to see little tiny antennas and stuff typically or typically little stuff that would be easy to break off I mean some of them are you know they're going to have some parts that can break off like the mirrors and all that stuff but they're not like toys but they're not like completely static display models either so they kind of sit in a neat place in the uh, collecting realm uh, so there you go. So there's those two, and that's a new casting, a new tooling from Mini GT. And then another new tooling is this guy right here, the Porsche 911 Carrera S and GT Silver Metallic. I was really excited for this one because I just I like my 164 scale Porsches, and uh, pictures of this one look really nice. And having it now in person, it really does not disappoint. So, so that's your most common quality issue, I guess. It looks like is the wheels are tires are coming off the rims, and sometimes you get a wheel that's not quite on straight, and it'll have a little bit of a wobble to it when it rolls. Slightly irritating, but not a huge deal, especially if you're just displaying these things. And uh, yeah, this casting looks pretty good. A lot of people do, not a lot of people, I should say, but people, one of the big complaints with Mini GT is that they don't put uh, disc brakes, uh, especially when you have these big wide open um, rims where you should be able to see the, you know, the brake disc and the caliper. Um, you should be able to see all that through there and they don't put that in there. I, you know, honestly... I haven't really cared too much, but I guess for like cars like this, I can see why there's a slight complaint um, because it just looks, you know, that space looks empty in normally in the real car, you would definitely easily see, you know, big discs in there. And I think they, Mini GT should be able to do that. They should be able to figure that out and do that. I don't know. It's, it's cost saving maybe for them to not do it. And I guess they think it might impede the rollability of these cars, but I would give up a little bit of rollability in the cars if, you know, for that detail. I think that's the one, the one missing detail that I think they probably should add. So I'm in agreement with the people that are complaining about that. Um, I still love these cars. I think they're fantastically awesome. It's just, it is a, it is a missing detail. And I, and I think, uh, you know, Mini GT is a, uh, been a great brand so far and i think they could definitely pull off doing that so i think they should um that's my opinion what do you guys think all right so that's it except for
couple of five packs and we're just gonna open these up real quick this this video is getting lengthy um, so we'll start with the Autobahn Express so we've got a Ford a Porsche an Aston Martin a BMW a Land Rover rip open that five pack take a look at each one of the cars here real quick Here's your Land Rover. Polizzi, 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 Polizzi. I'm terrible at pronouncing stuff. Um, older tooling from 2015, it looks like. Pretty cool, pretty basic. Not really super into that one. This one's really cool, the BMW. Green's a nice color for this car. It's interesting how it just you I, you realize that like um, some cars like the shapes of the cars just look the best in certain colors. And I'm gonna say yeah, this one does look cool in uh, this green color. It's a good color for this car. Um, and then the Aston Martin. In white, pearl white, or kind of, yeah, it's like a pearlish metallic white. Looks pretty decent. I like how they kind of, they made the side mirrors part of the window piece. It's kind of a nice touch to this casting. Um, where's the copyright date? Oh, 2011. So this casting's been around for a while. Uh, we get a Persia. Not my favorite Porsche. But it looks nice in yellow. And we get the headlights and the taillights. And uh, a nice personalized license. I'll see you later. And yeah, it looks alright. Not bad. And then the real reason I wanted this uh, five pack was for this Ford GT. Sort of collect this casting. Got a bunch of different variations of it. In the collection and it does look nice in this color red like a metallic red the stripe on it this casting's been around for a while 2004 it looks like copyright date and then was it retooled in 2015 maybe I don't know relicensed maybe I'm not really sure but anyway I do like this casting um, I think it's cool And, uh, yeah, that's really the, what attracted me to the five pack was getting that checked off the list. All right. And then next is the blue highways two. Now, is that what this is? Okay. So it says blue highways two was the original blue highways five pack. All these same castings. I don't think it was, was it? No, it wasn't. But you get an Austin Healey Roadster. We're going to get a Ford Thunderbird, a uh, Chevy Camaro, Aston Martin, and a Jaguar. So let's go ahead and open up this. Check these out. So here's the Austin Healey. Kind of a cool car. I always thought the front ends of these were a little goofy. That fish looking mouth. Cool color choice for the interior. It like a it's like a weird goldish champagneish looking thing with this kind of like light metallic greenish. And it works. It works. It looks good. Um, then we got this uh, T-Bird in orange. Eh, I don't know if that's a great color for this car, this weird metallic orange. These cars, I think, more subtle colors, I think, are better for these cars. But it looks okay. Um, then the Camaro. Kind of like, the. this is the odd one out. 
in this pack, I think. All these are like classic old cars, and then you got this in there. Which is kind of weird. What does the Blue Highways theme mean? Somebody let me know in the comments. But a black Camaro convertible. It looks all right. Maybe, oh, is it the idea that these are all convertibles? Is that what it is? Blue Sky? Is that what the Blue Highways thing is? I think we're figuring this out, guys. But I just think that Camaro still is, kind of sticks out like a sore thumb because it's not a classic. Look at this thing. This thing is just awesome. I like this casting quite a bit. It looks good in red, too. I think they've put this out, what, like green and silver already? It's a newer tooling, I believe, yeah, 2019. Looks good in this metallic red color. And then uh, the Jag. So here's this one. This is a newer tooling as well, 2019. And it looks pretty good in blue. Green's definitely the best color for this, of course. But uh, this blue color is pretty nice too. All right, so that is going to be it for this video. What was your favorite of the episode? Actually, honestly, my favorite is this one. It just sucks that, uh, you know, that's needs fixing. That's not on straight. It's got some issues, but the gold foil on here is just kind of impressive. It looks really nice and just kind of cool when Mini GT does something special like that. Um, so I'm a fan of that. All right, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you guys very much for watching another episode. Again, stay tuned, and we're going to go through those vintage Hot Wheels and check those out uh, sometime later this week, so, or coming up here. And, uh, yeah, so check that out when that gets posted. Try to come up with a couple new, couple other videos maybe this week in between the weeklies. I've kind of been slacking a little bit, um, but that's okay. It's summer. Got a lot of stuff to do outside and stuff like that. What is this? Now appearing on the ground here. Where did that come from? Got some weird... Am I bleeding? I don't think I'm bleeding. Alright, I don't know what that is or where it came from. I don't know. Maybe the bottom of one of those uh, five pegs? Hmm. Well, that's a mystery. Maybe I'll solve it later on. Alright, thank you guys very much for uh, watching. Have a great day.